art nerds. So these are the beautiful supplies that Kaboja sent me as an early birthday present. The Lacrel, well, send, wow. I am not gonna be able to say any of these words. Come on, Becca, you can do it. Sennelier or Sennelier Lacrel watercolor, French artist watercolor. And I've never gotten a play with this brand before. I am really excited because I know it's a really nice brand. I've heard people chat it up. I've heard people say wonderful things about it, but I have never committed to trying it. So I'm excited. I was also sent a beautiful pad of, and it's an eight by eight, it's a 7.9 by 7.9, but it's basically 8.8. .8, and I love the 8.8 .8 size or the eight inch by eight inch size because I don't know, there's something just right about it. It's like just right to make something and I love square format watercolor paper because I don't know, maybe because it's like a book format, like a children's book format, that could be. Anyway, I am super excited to play with this, you guys. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the swatch test with these beautiful watercolors on this beautiful paper for you guys today. So we're gonna begin by reading the box. These are honey-based watercolors and we get five colors. We get a warm yellow, a warm red. It looks like maybe a cool blue could go either way. A beautiful burnt sienna and then black. So that'll also make for a really fun color mixing challenge video too. Cause I'm done the six color challenge and I haven't, I have not done a five color challenge and I haven't done a three primary and then two neutral challenge. So that's gonna be fun. So the back says a honey-based watercolor, five tubes, 0.33 US fluid ounces. The honey used in Lacrel Seigne acts not only as a preservative, but also as an addictive, an additive, wow, an addictive painting experience, an additive bestowing incomparable brilliance and smoothness to the paint. Always striving for excellence, Sennelier has revamped its watercolor formula, increasing the amount of honey to reinforce the longevity, radiance, and luminosity of the colors made in France using traditional methods. And not only ha does it have this really cute belly band, which I believe you can probably, yeah, you can just slip off if you're like me and you like to keep the belly bands. But look at that beautiful box. And look, those are full-size tubes, y'all. Let me see if I have, uh, bop, 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 bop. I'm kind of looking around for like any of the Holbein or Mission Gold tubes that I'd gotten for that prior review. But these are full, these are serious tubes and they come in a beautiful reusable tin and they're so well packaged. They've got lots of cushion. And then if you should acquire more of these, you can just fill your tin with those. So that's a really beautiful gift tin. And that's the test pack too. Like this is a serious, when I was, when I saw a test pack, I thought actually I have something similar that I need to do a review video on. So you can call this a sneak peek. So I would bought, I'm not opening it all the way cause it'll get in the way of the camera. I bought the core, um, like the brilliant color. I don't remember the name, saturated color, maybe set, right? And this is what came in that set. Like these are like what point? How big are you? Wow. Five millimeter, seven, seven millimeter, it says five millimeter. See, you get a real, you get a real tube, which is real nice. So you get a, how many millimeter? 10 millimeter, and then I also have, bum, 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 bum. so yeah, the 15, 10, and then five. So you get a nice, a nice amount of watercolor for this test set. This is enough to let you know whether or not these watercolors, I mean, it's more than that because if you love them, it's enough that you can actually continue painting and not have to reorder immediately. So that is really nice. And then we have a watercolor block and it is wrapped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and be an adult and carefully cut it open. All right, so I've got this started. I'm really, really excited about this little arches block. Well, I say little, it's a nice size arches block. This nice size arches block because I have a hard time finding in my local stores 
blocks about this size of arches, like smaller blocks. So something that would actually be usable for me as a block, I have a harder time finding it. As you guys can see, it has the black protective paper, instructions, and look, even a quality can't claim number. So Arches has passed hands a few times. Um, it spent some time recently under Windsor & Newton. It spent some time affiliated with Canson for a while, but I think it's back under its own name. And Arches is one of those watercolor paper brands where you hear a lot of pros talk about how much they love it. And it is, it is a great paper. But then you have a lot of illustrators who don't care for it as much because they're doing tighter watercolors and they sometimes, and I am speaking from experience, have, ex have trouble getting the paper to behave. So it's just, it's one of those sort of things where it's nice to have a variety of papers in your studios, studio, or in your cache, your collection. I'm just removing this protective paper by using, and I know I'm like all up in your faces, by using a knife just to get it started. Boop, boop. Ah, ah, ah. And although I am loath usually to use really nice papers for swatches, I do try to use, I do try to use um, cotton rag papers for nice watercolors, but just because that's kind of to the best advantage of the watercolors. I will use these in conjunction since they were a gift sent from a friend. And I think said friend would enjoy seeing them used together, but I can't wait to use this pad of paper, y'all. And although Kabocha did send me brushes, they are fairly petite points. So I'm gonna use a nice, larger, natural hairbrush for the swatches. And I think what I wanna do with this is what I did with the Holbein set and the Magello set where I do a tube swatch and then I let them dry in half pants because I do tend to work in half pants and that way we can see whether or not these work as half pan watercolors. I've had trouble with honey based watercolors in the past with half pans uh, because they never seem to really uh, dry out properly. So, you know, that doesn't make them inferior watercolors. It just means we have to change how we use them. So they have a hexagonal top, a little different from the groove the grooved lid on the game of Smith. Fairly easy to open though. And I'm gonna do a dot and then we're gonna blend out the dot. So we'll do like a dot card basically. And sometimes dot cards are the way, not half pants, but dot cards are the way to travel with like your nice two watercolors because it's such a minute amount and it adheres to the page. Whoa, that was more than a dot. Wasting beautiful watercolor. I should be reading the colors. So we have lemon yellow, we have bright red, we have ultramarine deep, so it's actually a warm blue. So we have warm yellow, warm red, warm blue. It's gonna be fun to do like a mixing demonstration with these. I am one of those artists, I'm a comic artist, I rely a lot on convenience colors, but I love getting back to the basics for demonstrations and stuff. Because most of us do not travel with a huge palette. We might even travel with like an Altoids 10. I also love putting nice watercolors and those kind of cookie vamping. Like, for example, this is filled with Magello Mission Gold watercolors, right? And it's really cute. So I really like um, kind of revamping. So that was actually Chinese orange. That's not a brown. Oh, that's a nice orange. And then this is Payne's gray. Oh, oh, nice. Now I'm really excited about the color choices because there are two colors that can be used to neutralize. So you're not wasting your other, like neutralize quickly. So you're not wasting your other colors. Mixing in abundance, trying to neutralize something. Next, we swatch on the arches. That red is gorgeous. At least, at least why? And that's one of the other beautiful things about arches is that it tends to have beautiful depth of color. Let's go get that blue. There's a mix. Got a lot of color, so we don't mix twice. Sorry, it's a bunch of those right now, I was saying. If I were a Disney princess,
princess movie, the Disney princess who bursts in the song, over art supplies. Instead of household inanimate objects that have become animate, or, you know, birds in the forest, or the stars in the sky, it would be more art supplies. That's a nice for Kingsbury, too. Like, it really, it shades to almost black, so you can use it in a fuller, more saturated form. Oh, aren't those gorgeous? So while those dry, I have exactly five pans left over from when I assembled my Magello set. I'm gonna have, or no, my Holbein set. Holbein. So, let's get this So, I'm just going to fill five little half pans and then let them dry. And it's not even a full fill, it's like a half fill, and it's gonna, as it evaporates, it's gonna shrink. I have, I have flirted with many ultramarines over the years, and I'm never quite satisfied because they go down beautiful, as they do, as they are wont to do. They go down beautiful when you work with them from two form, and then when you reconstitute them from half pans, or if you use already made into half pans, like like ones made in half pans, for example, they're never as beautiful. Watercolor swatches have dried. Our half pants have not. I'm actually gonna let these dry out for three days. Although they are, I think they are progressing pretty nicely. Considering I literally just filled them. Some already have kind of like that little bit of a skin. I don't know if you guys can tell with the black, it's got a bit of a skin as compared, not black, paint's gray, with the ultramarine, which is still pretty wet. I know, sometimes it's hard to tell with all the sheen on it. That's why you let it dry multiple days. But we have some really beautiful swatches already going on. Nice, brilliant color. They seem to be really finely milled. The ultramarine, there isn't as much sedimentation. And normally with a paper like this, you get sedimentation. The yellow is a little cooler than I expected. That's not a problem. Um, it's like a really nice middle of the road yellow and the red is a little warmer than I expected or no cooler sorry a little cooler than I expected as well so it does seem like a nice blending triad and I look forward to playing around with that in front of you guys and for myself learning a few things trying a few things so I will see you guys in a few days for me but pretty much immediately for y'all when we swatch our little half pans all right, art nerds, I am back. It has been a couple of days. These have had time to dry. So I'm going to swatch them in the same order using a cup of clean water. And I'll just kind of swish. Ooh, they're still very soft, so it doesn't take much to reactivate it. I just want to see if the color holds up. Sometimes the color will shift if you dry them out like their Daniel Smith colors that will do that. Which is, that's part of the nature of the piece. It doesn't make them not nice watercolors. It just means you need to know that when you're opting to put them in a dry half palette. And sometimes you might even like the color shift. You might be able to use them both ways, so always good to know what you're dealing with. I'm still looking, ooh, see, I think the orange is actually a little more actually orange in appearance than it is in the tube form. And finally, that paint's gray. And I have a gray that is a paint. The gray cap Oh, All right, so I'm going to let these dry and check in with you guys. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I think it is just about dry and we're just about done. I think other 
watercolor La Prelle by Sommelier in their wonderful watercolors. Thank you so much, Kabocha, for the early birthday present. I am super excited about the field test. I even have something cute sketched up. I bet you guys, well, some of you might be able to tell what it is, but I bet you guys can't quite tell what I'm going for there yet. I need to find a container to put these little guys in because I don't have any Altoid tins laying around, but I'm sure I can scrounge something up. So thank you guys so much for watching. My dear patrons had voted that they wanted to see more mid-range watercolor reviews. And while these are very nice and they're a little bit pricey, I would still consider them mid-range because they will last a really long time, or rather, I would say they're a good investment. How about that? Rather than mid-range. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Kabocha, so much for these awesome watercolors. I'm going to be sending you a dot card so you can play with them a little bit too. And I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.